this video will fall on the operating systems as well. However, I wanted to do a different one because this is quite a big topic. So we're going to be looking at now the performance of operating systems. So there are quite a few things that affect the performance. The main ones are hardware factors. So that's the physical, tangible components that we can see and touch. We have malware factors. And we also have virtual memory factors. So I'm going to go through each of those and try and explain in as much detail as I can. So feel free to pause the video, go back. I highly recommend pausing and going back. So under hardware factors, we have number of cores. So every processor made nowadays anyway, has what's known as cores. And cores are simply physical processors on a single unit. For example, here we can see what a processor might look like when drawn. And we can see core one, two, three, and four. So just imagine this is what a processor looks like that we would buy in a shop to build a PC. And this processor is essentially split into four cores. It could be eight cores, six, 16, 32, however much we want. So each core can do its individual work. So imagine I have a task and I want to make that task go as fast as possible. I could have one single core, which is one single processor, or I could split that job up into four smaller sections and send it to each core. And each core would do a single part of that job and send the information back. So having cores, most modern operating systems anyway, they're built to work on multiple cores. So that would, in theory, speed, the, speed up the operating system roughly four times in theory. It's never the actual case, but in theory, that's how it should work. The next one we have along here is SSD versus hard drive. So... SSDs are normally going to be 5 to 10 times faster than the traditional hard drive. However, the hard drive in most cases is cheaper per gigabyte. Now, SSDs and hard drives differ in another way, in a thing called fragmentation. So when something is fragmented, I'm going to speak to the gamers here, when you have a frag grenade in something like Call of Duty, right? When you throw the frag grenade or when something becomes fragmented, it spreads apart, it explodes, it goes in multiple directions. The same thing happens with hard drives. Uh, if I can find a decent image here. Okay, let's just imagine, okay, this one. The disk is spinning. I am writing stuff or saving stuff to my disk. But because it is spinning, I might save stuff on this sector here. Some of it might get saved over here. Some might get saved over here and some might get saved over here, right? So that means the data or the information or my file is now fragmented. When I need to go and open that file again, my operating system and my hard drive will have to go to all these different locations just to open that one file. So that's what fragmentation is. When files and folders are spread across the drive. Now, this is not an issue with, with SSDs. Simply because SSDs, they use multiple memory chips or memory modules to make up however much storage you want. So if I need to store a file, my SSD will say, okay, well, since your file is four gigabytes, I'll just simply make space on this chip here, give it four gigabytes, and that's it. Whereas a hard drive, remember what I did earlier, uh, one gigabyte might be saved here, one gigabyte saved over here, and one here and one here. So that's fragmented. There's a process called defragmentation, which has to be done with hard drives over time to make them I mean, less spread out. So defragmentation is simply to bring those individual pieces back together into a single sector. Another thing we have to look at, um, since we spoke about cores before, we should probably speak about threads as well. So cores is the hardware implementation. So for example, this one chip can have four cores. It can have eight cores, six, 16, however much you want. Threads are the software implementation of cores. So even though I only have, for example, this one here has four cores, threads normally double the amount of um, core count. So if I have four cores, I normally have eight threads. If I have eight cores, I normally have 16 threads. And just like what cores will do, threads actually take the work given to it by the system. It will split that job into two sections and it will actually do individual pieces of that work and bring it back together at the end. Now, in theory, it should make the work roughly half the amount. It should take the work half the amount of time to complete. However, because it then has to split the work, that's a task in itself that takes time. Do the work takes time as well. And then it has to, at the end, bring everything back together. That takes time as well. 
operating systems have to be programmed or created specifically to make use of cores and of threads as well. Uh, another thing which I have here is RAM. Everyone knows RAM, hopefully, random access memory. So the amount of RAM you have in your, uh, pro in, in your computer matters a lot. And the type of RAM you have, hopefully you guys can see my video here. So on the right hand side, I have DDR3 RAM running at 1600 megahertz. And on the left here, I've got DDR4 RAM running at 2666 megahertz. Don't worry too much about those numbers. We just need to know that the faster the RAM, the more information or more data can be sent in and out of RAM, okay? So RAM does play a factor in the performance of the operating system as well. Um, we can also speak about, let's speak about virtual memory. So virtual memory is essentially um, when the amount of RAM we have. So here I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM. So let's say I open 20 Chrome tabs. I open GTA 5 on my PC. I open Adobe Photoshop. I open Adobe Premiere Pro. I open as many applications as I can. And all my 16 gigabytes of RAM is completely gone. What the operating system will do at this stage, it will say, okay, well, I can get some virtual memory, which is essentially fake memory. And it gets the fake memory from the SSD or the hard drive. It will say, okay, well, I need an extra four gigabytes, okay? To make everything run relatively smoothly, I need roughly four gigabytes more. It will go to your SSD or hard drive, take the four gigabytes it needs to run those applications, use it as virtual memory. So it's not real memory, it's just virtual memory. It's fake memory being utilized temporarily to try and accommodate for the extra four gigs necessary, right? Um, another thing that we could mention, um, I mentioned malware earlier. So there is a section which we'll get to, which is totally about malware. So I won't go too deep into that now, but malware, malicious software, any software written or created intentionally to cause harm or to get someone's information. We have viruses, worms, spyware. Um, we have quite a few, but just keep note that malware can also affect the performance of your operating system. So I'm going to stop this one here. That's all I have for this one. And in the next one, I'm going to speak about operating systems again. We're going to detail about what they actually do.